JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 20th. I am Harald Lambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the dollar traded lower against all but one of the other G10 currencies on Tuesday and during the Asian morning Wednesday. It gained only against uh, the Japanese yen, while the currencies against which it lost the most ground were the Kiwi, NOC and the Pound in that order. The greenback underperformed the least versus the Canadian dollar and the Swiss franc. Now, the weakness of the dollar in the traditional safe havens yen and franc suggests that risk appetite remain, remained uh, supported for another day. However, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that this was not the case. Major EU and US indices closed in the red, the only exception was uh, DAX, with sentiment improving somewhat during the Asian session. Although China's Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong's Hang Seng are down 0.38 and 0.15% respectively. Japan's Nikkei gained 0.81%, while South Korea's KOSPI is up 0.32%. Now, the setback in investor morale may have been the result of a report questioning the results of the coronavirus tests by Moderna Inc. Um, in the report, it was noted that uh, the test results were lacking details. What's more, both infected cases and deaths from the disease accelerated yesterday, which may have also dented uh, market sentiment. However, with headlines suggesting that more fiscal and monetary stimulus around the globe is underway, and with the virus curve being much flatter than a couple of months ago, despite uh, yesterday's acceleration, we would treat uh, uh, yesterday's setback as a corrective, as a corrective move. Even if we had a report questioning the vaccine results, we believe that we are much closer to a successful drug than uh, before. Thus, we stick to our guns that the path for of uh, least resistance for uh, risky assets may be to the upside, while uh, safe havens are set to lose more of their shine. Now, as for today, we already got the UK CPIs for April. The headline rate tumbled to 0.8% year over year from 1.5%, missing estimates of 0.9%, uh, while the core rate slid to 1.4% from 1.6%. The forecast was for the core rate to tick down to 1.5%. The fact that uh, the core rate declined by less than the headline one suggests that this may have been due to the collapse in oil prices during the month. However, this data is unlikely to change speculation of the, over the Bank of England's monetary policy plans. At its latest meeting, the bank kept its policy unchanged, but noted that the current QE is set to reach its target at the beginning of July. So this combined with officials' readiness to take further action if needed, suggests that the QE expansion may be on the cards for the June uh, meeting. Now, as for the pound, we stick to our guns that the stalemate of uh, the Brexit negotiations, combined with the prospect of further easing and the likelihood of negative rates in the UK, are likely to weigh on the currency. Remember that the UK Prime Minister Johnson insists that the Brexit transition period should last until December 31st, which keeps an own deal exit uh, uh, at that time on the table. While on Friday, Bank of England's uh, economist, uh, chief economist Andy, Andy Haldane said that the bank is looking uh, more urgently at uh, negative interest rates. We get, uh, we get more inflation data for April later in the day. 
and this time we get the CPIs from Canada. The headline CPI rate is expected to have fallen into the negative territory to minus 0.1% year over year from plus 0.9% while no forecast is available for the core rate. As was the case with the UK CPIs, due to the collapse in oil prices, we expect the Canadian core rate to have slid by less than the headline rate. At its prior gathering, the Bank of Canada announced an expansion of its QE purchases and the potential negative inflation rate combined with, fer with further slide below the bank's objective of 2% in the core metric may increase speculation for more easing by this bank and thereby bring the Canadian dollar under selling interest. That said, we would treat such a setback as a corrective uh, move. If risk appetite improves again, oil prices are likely to benefit, which in turn could provide support for the Canadian currency. Now, as for the rest of today's events, ahead of the Canadian CPIs, we get uh, Eurozone's final CPIs for April, but as it is always the case, they are expected to confirm their initial estimates. Later, in the US, we have the minutes of the latest uh, FOMC gathering. Back then, the committee kept interest rates unchanged at the 0 to 0 0.25 range and hinted that more stimulus may be delivered if judged necessary. We will continue to use powers proactively until we are confident that the US is solidly on the, red, on the road to recovery, Fed Chair Powell noted. He also added that economic activity will likely drop at an unprecedented pace in the second quarter, which suggests that they are more likely to act again than not. We will look into the minutes for clues on how likely further action is and what form it could take, but we don't expect them to prove a major market mover this time around. After all, we got an updated view on monetary policy by several Fed officials uh, recently, including Fed Chair Powell, who warned over an extended period of weak growth and stagnant incomes due to the pandemic, but who also made it clear that he and his colleagues are unlikely to push interest rates below zero. Remember that a couple of weeks ago, investors have started to price in such a likelihood by pushing the yields of the Fed fund futures into the negative territory. Today, though, all yields are back in the positive zone. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching uh, and listening. For those who are interested in learning about, uh, about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every, every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.